Well, hello there. How is everyone? I hope you're all well on this thirsty Thursday. Yeah, thirsty Thursday. You're looking absolutely amazing, by the way. This has been a good week. A good week for us. A good week. But look, we got caught in a few hours' time. Now, I'm not streaming it live. I'm not streaming it live. I'm going to record it, trim it down to get the maximum, maximum viewing pleasure out of it. Like a chef. Mwah. Like that, right? And then... Once I've done that, then I'll do a video, you know, for those of you who have got less time and can't sit through hours upon hours of court hearings, we'll do a bit of a summary, all right? But it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one to keep your eyes peeled. But for now, we're going over 20 red flags. And what I want you to do at the end of this video, I want you to let me know down below what your red flags are. Now, I don't suppose this list is going to be exhaustive. We're going to touch on them. And if there's any of them that you also want us to dig in deeper in a, in a video, we may have already done it, but that was a while ago. And look, I know there's fresh faces. I can see you. You're a fresh face. I ain't seen you around it. But anyway, look, so we get on with it. Crack on. With number one, no connection. It's been stated by the defence that there's simply no connection between Brian Koberger and the victims. How can that be? How can that be that there is absolutely no connection? Surely there's got to be a connection, right? But we've got to go by the fact that they've said there is no connection. A year and a half down the line, and the defence is confidently saying there's no connection between our client and the victims. That's a red flag. Number two, everybody's favourite, the eight-hour delay. Eight-hour delay in calling for help. Now, some may say it can be easily explained. Nothing was heard, nothing was seen, nothing out of the ordinary. They went to sleep, they were pissed up, hung out their backsides, and they just slept. Some people have, however, pointed out, what, didn't they need to go to the toilet? Where is the toilet in this house? Well, the toilet just happens to be outside Zanna and Ethan's door. So, look, can you? I know I certainly can't at this, but that's an age thing, isn't it? That's an age thing, can't make it for a whole night without needing the loo. I, can't, I, I, I think in my younger years, probably could make it all the way through, especially after a skinful. Pass out, wake up. But ultimately, even at the end of that eight hours, law enforcement weren't the first people to be called. That's a red flag. Number three, sign of insider knowledge. Now, what I mean by that is that we talk about the, the layout of the house. Somebody going into this house. Imagine someone going into this house blind, never been in there before. Never been in the house before whatsoever. Didn't know whose room was whose. Didn't know whether the doors were going to be locked, what they were going to face when they got in there, whether there would be people in there sleeping over who weren't expected. We know Ethan was one of them. We know Kaylee was one of them. But ultimately, there could have been 20 people in there. So for someone to brazenly walk in there, not even armed with anything other than it seems a bladed weapon. That to me is is a red flag. It would point towards the fact that someone knew what they were walking into. And when you pair that with no connection, it just doesn't seem to make sense. Changing of locks, which kind of goes hand in hand. We know that Zanna, her door lock was changed in the weeks leading up to this crime. And yeah, that to me... There may be nothing in it, but changing the locks would mean that the locks were utilised. And that, again, goes hand in hand with prior knowledge of what to expect when you go into that property. Because I'm saying, if all of these people had locks on their doors, then someone must have gone in there with the thought they would either have to kick doors down or break doors down, or they would have the ability to knock on a door and get the person to open the door for them. It's a red flag. No party. No party. This was a party house. But not on this night. Not on this night. Now, some people may say, well, you can't have a party every night. But this was a football match night as well. And they were all out. They were all out doing their own things at different parties and doing different bits and pieces. And this was a party house. But not on this night. just happened that the one night they didn't seem to have a party was the night that this atrocity occurred. And that, to me, is a red flag. What else have I got? I've got an earlier fight. Earlier fight. The frat house fight. The fight between Ethan, Zanna, and David Loach. The shriveled up balls conversation. And the... Um, look, there's some, there's some confusion around this. Whether it happened, whether it didn't happen. Look, 
Kara said it happened. The family had stated earlier in an interview that it did in fact happen and some people just didn't see it. But there was a fight. There was an argument. And at one point, Zana's family were thinking of coming down and and dealing with it. But they couldn't because they'd been out, they'd been drinking. And yeah, look, it is the way it is. There was a fight earlier that night with frat boys and we'll touch on something a little bit later in this list. So then we've got um, a drug connection. Sadly, there is a narcotics connection. You may not want to hear it. You may want to stick your head in the sand, but there is. And with narcotics becomes, or with narcotics comes risks. And even though this is a, <clears throat> a, a completely left field situation, it could well be that this was a crime that was simply connected to that. I'm not saying that we're talking about cartels or anything like that. I'm talking about was this a robbery gone wrong? Was this someone owing someone money and it spiralled out of control? Did someone truly dispose of a large quantity of narcotics and piss someone off? We just don't know. But the fact that there are drug connections on the peripheral is a red flag. I've also got Demetrius and Emma. The Demetrius and Emma situation is again a red flag because these are a couple of nefarious people. They've been involved in narcotics, again the narcotics connection, and not only that but the death of a young individual and it would seem that these uh, the these are a pair of Teflon dons. The shit just won't stick to them. And that to me is a red flag. Let me know down below what you think of Demetrius and Emma. Pictures of the K-Bar with frats. We've seen it. We've seen pictures of the frat brothers messing about, jerking about with bladed instruments. And um, bearing in mind that that's how this happened, and we're going to touch on something in a second that further sort of fuel, fuels that fire, you know, it just leads me to believe that did the fight that happened earlier on in the evening spiral into something more, more dangerous and pair that with alcohol heightened sense of you know anger furious anger who knows but it's a red flag which leads us straight into the continued violence which we saw with timmy reed a group of between 40 to 50 of these footballers frat brothers turn up at another individual's house and put him in hospital luckily he wasn't killed but we do know that the university tried to sweep it under the rug they weren't going to do anything about it same as law enforcement weren't going to do anything about it until timmy reed and his family got themselves legal representation and forced their hand but um, it will be interesting to track that and see exactly what happens with it and if anyone is held accountable. But what would have happened had Timmy Reed have died that night? What would we have seen happen there? Would we have even heard about it? Would the university have been involved? Because they do like being involved with things. We do know that, which we'll touch on that in a second. <laughs> Lack of IgG clarity. This whole IgG situation, which we're going to hear more about today in the court hearings, is a red flag to me. It doesn't make sense. I don't understand why they just didn't take Brian Koberger in and take his DNA or request his DNA like any other fucking individual. This whole convoluted story of building trees and this, that, and the other, and you know the speed with which they got a result as well just isn't indicative of, an, of a process that was done properly and um yeah that doesn't make sense to me and with that being said i feel that someone pointed the finger at brian koberger and said that's the person who did it and that to me is a red flag because i'd like to know who pointed the finger because someone did um bethany funk exculpatory evidence and this is coming in at number 12 which is a red flag to me the fact that in the PCA itself, there is some sort of conflict between when Zanna and Ethan, who were involved in this fight, she said they left at 1.45 a.m. in the morning. But the parents of, um, you know, Zanna and Ethan have kind of said that they were just at home and, you know, eating pizza or whatever they were doing, which it, it, there's such a conflict of information there. 
were they at the party? Did they leave 145? As again, um, corroborated by the PCA and Dylan Mortensen's statement saying they got home around two. There's a two hour window there between what families are saying happened and what is being said by the two surviving roommates. And a lot can happen in two hours. So that to me is a red flag. 13, the case being gagged. The whole gag order to me is just indicative of things being hidden. And when people are hiding things, I can't help but think that there's something that people don't want us to see that if we did, we'd look into and may bring something to light that they don't want brought to light. You know, if they have an open and shut case or they're confident, then let the world see. Because at the end of the day, you can't change the truth. But anyway, let's get on to the next one. University of Idaho Control, straight in at number 14. University of Idaho Control. They've been all over this like white on rice. And that, to me, is a red flag because it's indicative of they had skin in the game. For them to be as involved as they were and not trying to distance themselves with this, they wanted to control it and be at the helm of it. They made money out of it. They got funding out of it that... That's questionable where that money got spent, but we know the Phoenix University acquisition in the background as well worth around $180 million. I've seen people do a lot more for a lot less. It's a red flag. Next one, we have defense stating innocence. That's straight in at number 15. No matter what people want to say, it's unheard of for a public defender to come forward. Not only that, but we see both Ann Taylor and Eliza Massif, both saying Brian Koberger is innocent. And that, to me, the fact that they're saying, putting their reputations on the line, being in a courtroom and saying that they believe this guy is innocent, not only they believe it, he is innocent. <laughs> it's a red flag, mate. If he is innocent, then who's guilty? Next one. Number 16, we have Cy Ray coming in at number 16, proven BK whereabouts. Now, if Cy Ray turns around, he is able to prove that Brian Koberg wasn't in Moscow, Idaho, and he was, in fact, somewhere else, he was elsewhere, then you've got yourself a real grey area here because if you don't want to trust his information and trust what he's saying was the fact in his, in his interpretation then what are they going to do? No, we're not going to have that in this case and listen to you. But in all these other cases that we've used that same information to prosecute countless people, what are they going to do? You can't, you can't do that. You can't, you can't strike his skill from the record when it's being used to, to get someone free just because that doesn't suit the state, but when it suits the state to imprison people, say, oh, that's fine, that's that's all right then. It's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be an interesting one because if that rubbishes it, anybody involved in these other cases, I would straight away be jumping all over that like white on rice. So keep your eyes peeled. Be an interesting one. Red flag. Coercion of earlier witnesses. <laughs> We saw the FBI getting involved again when they tried to challenge the IgG information real early on. And what happened? FBI goes in and they all of a sudden then change all of their statements. That to me was a massive red flag. That was co that was coercion. That was intimidation of witnesses to retract what they had said. What's going to happen after today? Are we going to see more of that? <laughs> red flag. The next one we have, complete lack of talking. 18 that is in it and nobody's speaking nobody is speaking you would think the entire moscow idaho is under gag but they're not they're not just the people involved in the directly in in the court and and all of that but there's so much silence and sometimes the silence speaks the loudest no one saying anything. Half of the people who was around this is, is left. They've either gone to Spain or they've gone to other places in Europe or they've gone to Africa or wherever they've gone. But I ain't around here and no one's talking to anybody. Vanish. Like a fart in the wind. But there's too much silence. And that to me is a red flag. 19. Brian's mistakes. The mistakes that he would have had to have made in order to fit him into this crime, is not indicative of someone who is smart. In fact, it's indicative of someone who is a fucking idiot. An absolute fucking moron. And he worked 
as a or or he was teaching he was learning he was a phd student working towards a doctorate he was going to be someone who would be staring at the position he's in now helping to put people in the position he's in it would seem that he perhaps fell asleep during class if he made all these mistakes could he have made that many mistakes? Would he have made that many mistakes? Why would he have made that many mistakes? <laughs> just doesn't make sense. But look, idiots exist. But it's a red flag. And finally, which kind of goes hand in hand with that, and that is the skill of the killer. The person who did this crime, make no bones about it, this person had mental resilience and they had skill. They had strength, they had stamina, and... Yeah, you have to consider whether this was someone who had killed before, whether this was their first rodeo, and it's, again, make no bones about it, they knew what they were doing, they absolutely knew what they were doing, so whoever did this, it was planned, it was calculated, um, or it was something that was a burst of rage, but they had a lot of people backing them in their corner. And was able to help them in the time that followed. Because we've got two situations here. And that is you either trust the timeline. And if it's the timeline and you want to go down the route of it ain't frats. It's just someone who came into this house. And it is that time frame. It did, it did happen in that time. And that speed. Then that's a very, very skilled killer. And would a skilled killer with all of that skill make the mistakes that we're trying to then tie into Brian Koberger? Could that same, but it's, 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 it's like two people, two people, maybe an alter ego, who knows, or a very skilled person. And there is a red flag in there because we know that there are people around this that could indeed be considered skilled killers. So I'm not wanting to point the finger and say that person could have done something, but it does add an element of red flag to this. Because um, is Brian Koberger a skilled killer? Or is he just a patsy? Let me know down below what you think. What are your red flags? Did I miss anything? Is there anything you want to be seen more of? Do we discuss something in more depth? Even if it's something that we've done before. Let me know down below. And I'll catch you all later. <laughs>